Hey, welcome back and welcome to the new review. Next gonna be It Takes Two. In It Takes Two you find the kind of common red toolbox that might be sitting in your garage or your parents garage. It's one of the best boss battles I ever played. In the level leading up to this, co-protagonist Cody and May learn to chuck nails and wield a hammerhead respectively. Cody can shot nails into wooden surfaces, May can use the hammer to swing on those nails. Cody can nail moving platforms in its place. May can hop onto those platforms or wall jump between vertical surfaces that Cody can position via strategic nail shot. Eventually, he gets three nails to throw instead of one, leading to some extinctly frantic platforming. The boss fight that closed this level uses those abilities in concert. Cody and May stand on the Hollywood platform facing off against the toolbox. It can swing at them with a bottle on plywood arms, which the duo needs to dodge. To deal any damage, Cody has to pin its long wooden limp to a wall with his three nails, allowing May to swing over the smack its tiny body. As the fight proceeds, the toolbox shots nails into the air, which hurtle down and at the Hollywood platform. A platform which gradually shrinks as toolbox uses a handsaw to whittle it down to a noob with strategic cuts. The whole arc is a virtuosic showcase of what this game does so well. Like the developer Hazel Light previous game A Way Out It Takes Two can only be played in co-op, online or local, and success requires teamwork. This level introduces a new tool for each character to use, doles out a wide variety of tasks for you to accomplish with those tools, and then puts it all together in a winly creative boss battle that forces you to go and work together to succeed. It's strongly good and the rest of the game maintains a consistent high bar of quality. It Takes Two is the most creative 3D platformer I've played in years, but it builds on well thrown family comedy territory with a story that marries elements of Honey, I uh, Shrunk the Kids and the parent trap. May and Cody are a thirsty something couple who just seem to fight the time to spend with each other. When they are together they can stop fighting. As, as the game begins, they save their pretend daughter Rose down at the kitchen table to tell her that they are getting a divorce. Rose is understandably upset. She goes to her room, where she pulls out a pair of dolls, one made of clay, which looks like a Cody, and one cave from wood, which resembles May. She cries and when the tears land on the dolls, the ill-defined kit of magic that animates movie like Freaky Friday and Seventeen again springs into the action, transforming the flesh and blood May and Cody into their doll doppelgangers. Their quest to return to their bodies takes them on a journey of personal growth, a story that mostly succeeds. That story is carried by Cody and May, who has a believable relationship despite the cartoonish premise. The dialogue is often corny, but the voice performances from the two leads is impressively casual. This is some of the most natural sounding small talk I've ever heard in a game. Their rapport helps sell the concept that is a couple that loved each other deeply, but just haven't made time to prioritize each other. There's warm here, even where they're bickering. There is central navy to the idea that forcing a couple to spend time together will make them like each other, but it worked for me here because the problem is a May and Cody relationship do seems to stem primarily for a lack of time and attention. I never got the sense that they were fundamentally incompatible as a couple, just they had forgotten what they fell in love. The game's biggest problem, meanwhile, is Dr. Hakim, an anthropomorphic relationship advice book guiding the pair to reconciliation. He shows up about once a level to hit at where Cody and May should head next. Hakim heavily plays into the late in lover trope in a way that is loud, stereotypical and a little offensive. He's got a thick accent and each time he appears he is accomplished by the sound of strummed guitar and clocking castanets. He's pretty obnoxious. My wife, who I played the game with for this review and I talked to saying, oh, this terrible fellow again, each time he show up out split screens. We made it through this section on the first try and when I noticed that the noise matter has disappeared, I assumed that this brief once of stilled section had come to a close. But then we moved into a second shady area, this one populated by a few dozen more dozing moles and substantially fever rocks to help travelers the mulk, 
In the garden section, Cody has temporarily been granted the ability to turn into a plant. At certain key moments, um, the ability comes into play here. I'm morphed into a moss, moving in time with the maze movements, providing a rolling carpet of greenery to muffle her footsteps as we snuck past the moles. Eventually, we made it to the other side and the coast seemed clear. But then we heard the sound of the stamping mode in the distance and then the split screen camera in front of us farming a Crash Bandicoot style run at the camera chase scene. As the chase scratched on, the camera shifted perspectives multi times, introducing new challenges each time. We escaped down a pit and found another mole who started by own appearance, fell its own back blocking our part downward. So we ground pounded the poor creature belly until it fell out of the bottom and we scrambled through one last bit of side scrolling. At the end we found a pair of frogs, settled up and hope on the next challenge. It's impressive stuff, It Takes Two is the best 3D platformer I've ever played since Mario Odyssey and like that game? It has a flavor for variety. You may ride a frog or a fly, a plane with the wings made from Cody Boxster hack and slash through a Diablo style castle. Despite the downright wild amount of things to do, it takes to manage to handle every mechanic well. This is the second release from the Hazelite. Fantastic boss fights iterate on each area's mechanics in clever and surprising ways. Strong performances from the lead actors help overcome some corny dialogue and make the characters impressively believable. The bad. Dr. Hakim is uh, an incredibly obnoxious the take on the latent lower drop. That's all. Thank you for watching. Please comment and subscribe. Peace.